Welcome to the Dead Zone Podcast presents Professor Jack's Hobby School. This is episode one, Making Fire. Now, for those of you who have uh, listened to our podcast, uh, seen the, uh, the stuff we've done, um, I made silicone-based flame effects for my miniatures. So, the first thing you're going to need is silicone. I go a little more in depth later, but what you need to know right off the hop, it's got to be silicone that dries clear. That's the important part. Um, Next, you're going to need paint to uh, color the silicone. The first I use is a glow-in-the-dark paint. It's uh, it's got a yellow tint to it. That's Rob giving me an email. Next, you're going to need uh, a yellow, an orange, and a red acrylic paint. Now the important part is that the paint has to be the acrylic. See, acrylic or nothing. Because of the way silicone dries, it cures through moisture, acrylic paint. Do yourself a favor. Now to start, we need to get some silicone. You'll see I'm just dispensing a little silicone here. This happens to be in a squeeze bottle, which is uh, very, very convenient. In fact, I would recommend getting this with the applicator tip. It's very uh, uh, easy to work with. So now that I have three globs of this, and it's the bath and kitchen silicone, dries clear. That's the important part right there. If you're purchasing silicone, make sure it dries clear. I'm using it mainly because I happen to have it. I didn't go out and purchase anything special. If I did, I might go with a clear so that I can see as I'm mixing in the pigments to see exactly where the colors lie. But this is what I had. This is what I worked with. So first you're seeing uh, me mix in a glow-in-the-dark paint. Completely optional. The important thing I'm going to show you here now is the technique to doing it. You'll see I've got the uh, a little wooden stick. It's actually a, a skewer. I take a dab of the paint and I move it around in the silicone. Now, it's not vitally important, but what I try and do is when I'm mixing it in, This basic first step, get a pretty thorough mixing. Make sure it's all in. That glow-in-the-dark paint has a yellow tint to it, but it's not rich in pigment. It's not going to affect the color too much. Next, you're seeing I'm um, adding a little bit of yellow, and I mean just a, just a tiny bit of yellow to the skewer. And I'm moving that around. Now, unlike the first application of paint, I'm mixing it up, but you see I'm not getting it thoroughly throughout. The purpose of that is when I start making the base of the fire, I'm going to want yellower bits, yellower Okay, I'll go with that. Uh, More opaque yellow sections of the fire, but also clear sections of the fire. I want to be able to have the uh, variations that you would find in fire naturally. It's got to look as, as natural as possible. So there you see I've added the yellow. The next step in this uh, technique is to uh, shape a base for the fire, to to make it the shape that fire you would expect. I use the same skewer, and I start moving it up, making a a, uh, kind of a dollop of the silicone, and then I start flicking it up. Now this flicking action causes little, as you can see, little wisps of the silicone. Now it's still a liquid, it's still not a solid, uh, it, it's got a lot of play, so you can just keep moving it up with the skewer, just flick, flick, 
flick, and you're going to start getting these tongues of the flame. Now here you see kind of uh, the basis of a flame right there. That's the yellow core with the, the shape now starting with the flame. Now you see I've got another dab. I'm going to make a second one. I do them in threes because if I want to go through the process of making one of these, it takes some time, I want to make sure I have at least one that is dynamite. So, do three. If you flub one, your technique's not right, it doesn't turn out properly, there's a lot of chaos involved, I just do them in threes. So again, I'm just mixing in that yellow acrylic paint. And not so thoroughly as it's fully one color. You see, I've got the, the clear bits on the outside. You'll see some bits that are clear on the inside. Not clear, white. It'll turn clear. You want to be able to see through the fire. You want to be able to see yellow, orange, and red through the fire and around the fire. And it's important mostly to make it look natural. Flick, flick, flick. So here we go. I'm just flick, flick. You want to get those tongues of the flame coming up? Look at that. And it's it's just that easy. It's just that easy. We're almost coming to the end of part one of this series. But please, stick with us. We'll have a couple more installments. We'll show you how to uh, get what I think is a realistic-looking fire. Thank you for joining us. Uh, please listen to the Dead Zone podcast. Stay tuned for part two. Thank you, and good night.